Welcome to Pushback. I'm Aaron Maté. There have been a number of developments in the Russia Gate story recently, all of which underscore just how much of a fraud this entire thing was on the issue, especially of collusion. But in this segment, I want to focus on new revelations when it comes to the core allegation at the heart of Russiagate, which is this allegation that Russia stole emails from the Democratic Party and later gave them to WikiLeaks, because that is what is at the core of this entire thing. Well, on that front, we just got a pretty damning revelation from the firm that is responsible for accusing Russia of hacking Democratic Party emails and whose evidence was used by U.S. intelligence officials to uh, make that allegation in their assessments as well. And that firm is CrowdStrike. And one of the transcripts that we just got from a whole bunch of releases from the House Intelligence Committee is of an interview that CrowdStrike President Sean Henry, who is a former FBI official, worked very closely with Robert Mueller, uh, Sean Henry's testimony from December of 2017. And in it, he made a pretty damning admission. He basically admitted that his firm, CrowdStrike, has no evidence that alleged Russian hackers actually took anything from the DNC servers that they allegedly hacked into. And the reason why that's so important is because this allegation that Russian hackers stole emails is at the heart of all this. And Sean Henry, the president of CrowdStrike, is admitting that CrowdStrike actually doesn't have any evidence. It can't pinpoint when or even whether alleged Russian hackers actually took data from the DNC server. So I'll read you what he says. Uh, he is asked by Adam Schiff, do you know the date in which the Russians exfiltrated the data from the DNC? And Henry answers this. He says, quote, we did not have concrete evidence that data was exfiltrated from the DNC but we have indicators that it was exfiltrated. So what he's saying there is that he has identified who CrowdStrike says are Russian hackers inside the DNC. And we'll get to why even that claim is sketchy in a bit. But on the core issue of whether or not these hackers who he says are Russian took anything from the DNC, he's saying we do not have direct evidence. And he, he goes on. He says, there are times when we can see data exfiltrated and we can say conclusively. But in this case, it appears it was set up to be exfiltrated, but we just don't have the evidence that says it actually left. So what he's saying there is that looking inside the DNC servers, he sees evidence that somebody staged the DNC emails for exfiltration, for taking them from the server but he cannot tell us whether or not that exfiltration actually happened. And it is, a, it is a damning admission because if you can't say definitively that the people you accuse of stealing the emails actually took the emails from the server, then how can you confidently accuse them of stealing those emails? And he says this multiple times. Uh, he is asked by Congress member Stewart of Utah, uh, about um, the email specifically again, and he says, there's not evidence that they were actually exfiltrated. There's circumstantial evidence, but no evidence that they were actually exfiltrated. And this is something he says again and again and again and again. And so this is huge, and this is something that we were never told. Now, we were given an indication, though, of this, and I highlighted this in uh, writings that I've done on this. I did a long piece for Real Clear Investigations uh, last summer about how the Mueller report in recounting the alleged Russian hacking of the DNC uses qualified language when it comes to the moment when it has to describe when it says alleged Russian hackers actually took the email. Uh, Mueller says this, for example, quote, GRU officers, quote, appear to have stolen thousands of emails and attachments, which were later released by WikiLeaks. And I noted at the time that it was curious that Mueller added that qualifier of appear because if he was so confident that these officers stole those emails during these sessions he's talking about, why that qualifier appear? And I think now we've gotten the answer because we know that the U.S. government relied on CrowdStrike 
It was CrowdStrike that first made the allegation of Russian hacking in June 2016. We learned uh, later on from the trial um, and probably of Roger Stone that, in fact, the FBI had gotten from CrowdStrike redacted reports uh, of its studies of the DNC server and that U.S. intelligence officials had relied on those reports, even though they were redacted by CrowdStrike. Now, another area where Mueller uses qualifiers comes when he has to explain how he thinks WikiLeaks actually acquired the stolen material from these alleged Russian hackers. And there, too, the Mueller team acknowledged, quote, the special counsel's office cannot rule out that stolen documents were transferred to WikiLeaks through intermediaries who visited during the summer of 2016, unquote. So what Mueller is saying there is that Mueller does not actually know how WikiLeaks acquired the stolen emails, because if they did, they wouldn't be floating the possibility that WikiLeaks acquired them through intermediaries who visited in the summer. They would say, we've traced it through this data transfer here, but they can't actually do that because they don't actually know how WikiLeaks acquired the stolen emails. And so that is one more evidentiary gap. And I think one of the reasons why they were so uncertain is because now we are learning that CrowdStrike itself was not certain that these people they were alleging were Russian hackers actually took anything from the server. And this point speaks to something that Julian Assange has said many times. Assange has said that it's quite possible and even likely that state actors, including Russia or uh, Russian citizens, hacked into the DNC. But he has said that people are conflating with whatever those hacks may have been with whoever gave WikiLeaks the stolen emails. And he's saying that WikiLeaks's source was not any state actor. It was not any state that hacked into the DNC. Has at least one state actor hacked the DNC? Uh, probably. Uh, now, this is a separate question to the release of our emails. So in the US media, there's been a deliberate conflation between DNC leaks, which is what we've been publishing, and DNC hacks of the US Democratic Party, uh, which have occurred over the last two years, by their own admission, uh, a number of times. And so this from CrowdStrike is a strong development in Assange's favor, because it, it's CrowdStrike itself saying that it does not know whether or not these alleged Russian hackers actually took anything from the servers, even after they may have hacked in. Now, we also have to keep in mind that when we say uh, that, when we hear from CrowdStrike that, these were Russian government hackers inside the DNC server. On that point, too, we're taking them on faith. And on that point, too, they are not even absolutely 100 percent sure. So uh, during this uh, testimony, Sean Henry of CrowdStrike is asked uh, how they know that these hackers who they identify as Russian are actually the Russian government. Henry says this. We also looked historically at the environment using a different piece of software to look backwards at what was happening in the, envi in the environment inside the server. And we saw activity that we believed was consistent with activity we'd seen previously and had associated with the Russian government. And Henry is then asked, can you identify that as being with a fair degree of confidence that it's associated with the Russian government? And Henry says, we said that we had a high degree of confidence it was the Russian government. And our analysts that looked at it had looked at these types of attacks before. Many different types of attacks similar to this in different environments. Certain tools that were used, certain methods by which they were moving in the environment, and looking at the types of data that was being targeted that was consistent with a nation-state adversary and associated with Russian intelligence. So notice here the qualified ambiguous language we have a high degree of confidence it was the russian government they are not sure that means they are not sure and this stuff is associated with russian intelligence well associated with russian intelligence doesn't actually mean they have evidence that this actually is russian intelligence henry goes on to say there are other nation states that collect this type of intelligence for sure but what we would call the tactics and techniques were consistent with what we'd seen associated with the Russian state. So all they're saying here is that the characteristics of the hackers and their software had been associated with the Russian state before, but that is not concrete evidence that this actually is the Russian state. 
And there's yet another reason to question CrowdStrike when it says that it's associated certain software and tactics with Russian intelligence, which is that when they've made a similar claim against Russian intelligence before, they had to retract it. This was in Ukraine. Uh, uh, CrowdStrike claimed that it had found Russian military intelligence software had messed with some Ukrainian military hardware. And they said that using the same tactics that were used in the alleged hack of the DNC. Well, that was challenged and CrowdStrike in 2017 had to retract it. I'll read you a little bit of a report from Voice of America at the time. CrowdStrike has revised and retracted statements it used to betress claims of Russian hacking during last year's American presidential election campaign. In December, CrowdStrike said it found evidence that Russians hacked into a Ukrainian artillery app, contributing to heavy losses of howitzers in Ukraine's war with pro-Russian separatists. But that claim was challenged, including by the Ukrainian military of defense, which stated that the combat losses and hacking claimed by CrowdStrike never happened. And uh, CrowdStrike, after being challenged with the evidence, had to walk back this claim. So they got it wrong in Ukraine. Is it possible that they got it wrong here with the DNC as well? So look, we have one more case here where evidence that comes out undermines the dominant narrative that everybody has been told of for more than three years. When it comes to collusion, there's no doubt now that that basically was a scam. For all the talk about contacts between Trump and Russia, Mueller produced a report that could only find a couple of instances in which anybody actually acting on behalf of the Russian government interacted with the Trump campaign. And both of them were inconsequential. It was the Russian ambassador speaking to Trump campaign surrogates and officials, which is what happens during a campaign. And it was an assistant in the Kremlin press office calling up Michael Cohen and saying, sorry, we can't help you build a Trump Tower in Moscow. That was the actual reality of the extent of contacts between Trump and Russia. And the question after we got such a different misleading picture from leaks from intelligence officials for so long was, okay, well, if they were disingenuous about this collusion thing, what else were they disingenuous about? We've since found out that they were disingenuous about the social media farm, the troll farm that was a subject of indictments. Mueller's team um, indicted the troll farm and that raised a lot of excitement. But recently, uh, Justice Department prosecutors ended up dropping the case because the troll farm fought back and was seeking discovery. And we've since seen Robert Mueller have to admit that there is no actual even link between the troll farm and the Russian government. And by the way, if there were, it would be embarrassing for the Russian government, I think, in terms of them being accused of running a sophisticated propaganda operation because this troll farm was putting out junk clickbait that, you know, with Jesus memes and buff Bernie beams and all that stuff. So the question hanging over all these cases is, you know, if they were, they were so disingenuous on collusion, what else were they disingenuous about? Well, we've got that answer too with them dropping the troll farm case. And now with this admission by CrowdStrike on the core issue of the email hacking, we have the admission that they have a major evidentiary gap. So on top of all the other reasons to doubt what we've been told about Russiagate, we've just been given a huge new one. And we, of course, will continue to follow the story. Mm -hmm.